Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Brandon Watts and today we're going to be talking about how to get those nice see-through windows whenever we're doing HDR exposure blending. We'll be using a super simple trick that's tucked into Photoshop to master these blinds. So let's go and get started. But before we do, don't forget to like and subscribe to help out the channel. Every little bit helps. I certainly appreciate everybody's support. Now let's go and jump into Lightroom. Okay, and the first thing you're going to notice is that I have this four exposure bracket going from dark to light. The first one is going to be for my window. And then the next three is going to be to expose for the interior. So let's go ahead and select all of these. Make sure that our auto sync is turned on. We'll go ahead and bring down our highlights to about 50%. We'll raise our shadows to about 50%. We'll go ahead and go into our lens corrections. Turn on enable profile corrections. Turn on remove chromatic aberration. We'll go ahead and go into the manual tab and raise up the dew fringe by about three. Now we can go into our middle exposure and go back to the basic tab. We'll see what auto gives us for our white balance. That's not too bad. I kind of like that. The exposure is a little bit too bright. So let's bring that down, but I don't want that to affect all of my images. So I'm going to control Z to undo. I will deselect the auto sync and then I will go to bring down that exposure to, to taste. That looks good there. Now for our window layer, let's go ahead and change this to a daylight. That looks a little too greenish. So let's bump up the magenta a little bit. Let's go ahead and decrease that orange to the blue side just a tad. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, now we can go ahead and select all, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, now that we have everything opened up, we'll go ahead and just run our custom action to merge our bottom three exposures into one HDR file. That looks good. Now we can work on our window layer. And for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to just zoom in. We'll use P for pen, make a selection around the edge of the frame for that window. We'll make sure we want to do this for all windows. Okay, now we can just hit this with a mask. Okay, and that looks decent, but as you can see, it's uh, not that great. We would actually have to mask out uh, part of this side. Oh. We would have to mask out part of this, but as you can see, it still leaves these blinds rather dark and that's not too appealing. So instead of doing that, what we can also do is go ahead and select this thumbnail and go into our camera roll by doing control or command plus shift plus a to open up that camera roll and we can go ahead and just slide our shadows all the way up and that's about as far as we can go so let's go ahead and bring up our exposure and you can see that starts to affect our highlights so we'll bring down our highlights That looks a little bit better. It's still kind of dark here. So we're gonna have to do something better than camera roll. I'm gonna do a control Z. I'll duplicate this layer just so that we can see the difference. And I will reapply that camera roll settings that we did to this one. I'll turn that off. And now with this thumbnail selected, I'm gonna go into image, adjustments, shadows and highlights. And now you can see that Whenever you first open up your shadows and highlights, you're just going to see this toggle box here, this slider box here. We're going to open up show, show more options. And now we can really start to push our highlights so we're at, or our shadows. So we're at zero and we start to push that all the way up to 100%. You can see how that affects the shadows for this lower image. So let me... uh. just select that there we are and now you can see that when we do our shadows and highlights now we can really push our shadows compared to how we were able to in camera roll we don't want to go this far so we're just going to drop it into the 30 percent range our tones you can see as we drop that down to zero how that affects it and then we bring that up to 100 how that also affects it around 50 percent is okay our radius is kind of like feathering. So the more we go, the more it feathers it. 
but we're just going to leave that back to here. Now, when we go and reapply this, you can see the difference between this one is our shadows and highlights. This one is going to be our camera roll. So with our camera roll turned on, our shadows, we weren't able to push those as far with the camera raw compared to with the shadows and highlights. That looks a little, a little bit better. As we zoom in, you can see the difference. With camera raw, it's still too dark for those blinds. So I prefer shadows and highlights whenever I'm doing HDR work and trying to blend through it. Now I can just go ahead and mask out, brush out those sides because that is too dark. One thing I didn't want to get was going to be this top part up here. That's not part of the window, so we'll just brush that right back out. That's okay. We'll get this reflection right there. And we'll just try and be slightly precise at this top part. That's not too bad. Now let's go and finish this image. I'll go ahead and hit it with a camera roll. Bring it to about auto. That's a little dim. I like this, but there's too much orange. There's too much uh, orange color cast on these walls. So we'll duplicate this layer again. Go back into camera roll. Now we can go down to our color mixer. We'll bring our oranges down to about 60, minus 60, our yellows to minus 40. W for quick select. We'll select everything that we want to bring back, which is going to be this wood. And we can hit it with an alter option, then hit this mask button at the bottom. You can see how that affects it. That's nice. Do we bring back this little part right here? It doesn't look like it. There we go. There we go. Now we can zoom in and get these little gold pieces. As for the floor, we'll do W again for quick select. We'll select the floor. Make sure we only want the floor selected. And for this one, I'm going to do a shift F5. Make sure I have 50% gray and I'll just hit it with 50% gray. Because as you'll see, if I were to do it at 100%, that's a little too much on the orange side. So I prefer 50% just to kind of blend that in a little bit more evenly. That looks great. Now we can do a control or command plus alter option plus shift plus E to merge all visible. Go back into our camera roll. I think I'm gonna hit it with some contrast. It's good, that looks good. But now I'm missing this window right here. So all I'm going to do is just go and drag this back up. I will delete everything in that mask. I will do a control or command I to invert that selection. P for pin. Make a quick selection around this window. And we'll go ahead and hit it with another 50%. That's decent right there brush out the edges that we don't want okay and with this one i'm going to do b for brush hit five on the keyboard to bring up our 50 percent opacity for that brush and since we're on a black mask we want a white foreground color and i'll just tap that that's way too dark so let's go ahead and go down to 20% by hitting 2 on the keyboard. You can see how that changed to 20% opacity. And we'll just tap that. That's good right there. And I'd say that this is a good image. Good image. We could have brought back some of this right here. And as a matter of fact, we still can. Let's go ahead and just group these. Nope. Let's group all of these. Hit it with a mask. And then... W for quick select. Make sure we have sample all layers on. 
there we go there we go and we can show right through all those masks or all those layers rather than having to redo all the work again same thing for right here all right all right that looks really good so let me know in the comments what you all think i appreciate everybody's support thank you all for coming out as always you all take care and have a great day